friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. It's uh, December 2017 right now, but the video you're about to see was shot back in March. Originally the idea was to have it a typical morning in the workshop, and there are several instruments that you're going to see in the video. However, the very first instrument became such a big project that I already put a video out on it, and it's the Fiddle Fiasco Part 1 and Part 2. Uh, that was a fiddle from Nova Scotia, and uh, anyway, that's a long story. That's another story all to itself. So instead of it being a typical morning in the shop with all the instruments I worked on that morning, it's all the instruments less that fiddle. Hope that makes sense to you. Thank you for watching. Well, we put the fiddle away, let it do some resting and drying and things, and uh, we've got a really, really nice guitar here. This is an Alvarez, uh, really pretty guitar. Um, just looking at it, I'd say, well, I think she said it was Koa, I believe is what she told me. And it does kind of look like Koa. It also kind of looks like a curly mahogany, but uh, I, believe it's, I believe it is Koa. Um, just based on the the grain lines I see running through it. The neck looks like it's mahogany for sure. You can hear something rattling in there and what that is is the battery is loose inside. I guess that may have popped out during shipping or something. Okay, the concerns with this guitar are this is for a lady player, so she's you know she wants it uh, very low action and easy to play for a gal. She's got buzzy strings. Uh, the intonation is her concern. You know, she wants the action low enough for a female with small to medium sized hands. You know, she's just asking, is the neck straight? Are there any snags or any edges that need to be looked at? You know, general, general look, you know, over the whole thing. Okay, well, I've actually given it a pretty quick look over here. Um, I only notice a couple of things. Uh, you know, just, just tuning it up. Okay. You, if you just, you know, just tuning it up, and all I'm doing is just raking the strings. You can hear buzzes. There's buzzing, buzzing. Almost every string's buzzing. You know, I checked the action here, and uh, it's it's actually looking pretty good up in here. Um, it's it's at 80 thousandths on this side and 90 thousandths on this side, and that's just about where I like to see them. I, I don't like to see them go much lower than that. That's pretty nice, but up here, it's just crazy low. And I mean, you know, I really mean it's crazy low. You can't play a guitar this low. I'm, I'm going to say there's less than 10 thousandths of an inch, less than 10 thousandths of an inch uh, to touch the fret. You know, I've heard some guys say, well, I set them at 10 thousandths. Well, you know, if you play light, I guess that's okay. Or if you're playing electric, I think that you can get away with that too. But on an acoustic guitar, uh, there's a lot of string vibration, and it's going to vibrate if you've got it less than 10 thousandths. Here's a 10 thousandths gauge, and uh, let me just try it and see if it'll even go under there. It's actually raising it at, at the 10 thousandths. It's raising that at ten thousandths. You know, it's it's raising them all a little bit at ten thousandths, especially especially this G. This G is crazy low. Uh, you know, I normally set them at eighteen thousandths. I'm going to do her a favor and set them down to about fifteen thousandths, something like that. Maybe maybe you know a hair less than that, but I don't think I can get away with anything less than that on an acoustic guitar uh, without, it, without it buzzing. Um, and if you play really soft and, and easy, then maybe not, but uh, if you get on it at all, it's going to buzz. The only other thing I've noticed on the guitar, I've looked down the neck, the neck looks like it's pretty flat, um, there's a little bit, tiny bit of underbow in it, and that's fine. I don't think there's any problem with a truss rod or anything, that looks real, real good. You know, this area looks good. I don't see any real problem there. I'm a little bit concerned about a few of these pegs, though. Well, as a matter of fact, all of them look like they're pulled forward quite a bit. They look odd the way they're leaning. It may be the way it's made. It may be on purpose. I don't know. They just look odd. So I'm going to look at that real good when we take the strings off of it. I'm not a fan of this 
pickup type bridge here, but you know, it needs, it needs that for the pickup. Um, it is electrified, obviously. This little sound hole cover is pretty, and uh, we'll have to take that out and get in there and fix that battery, because that's driving me crazy right now. I also noticed the strap button might be loose. It's spinning here. I like to see those snugged up where they're not really doing much spinning. Really, overall, it's very good. I, I've, I've checked the edges here that I don't feel anything sharp. Everything feels real good to me. But I bet the frets are not perfectly level. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to level these frets and recrown them and work on the fretboard, make the fretboard look like brand new, basically. Then I'm going to string it back up, and then we'll check the, intona the action, intonation, all that. You know, I have a feeling just leveling the frets might be enough to give us our clearance up here. It just might be. So I'm going to try to make that work so that we don't have to put a new nut in it. And that'll just save her money and time and everything. So I think we're in pretty good shape. I'll check the intonation real quick here. I didn't check that. Let's just see what it's like. That'll give me an idea of what I'll have to do to the intonation. There's the E. It's actually pretty good. It's if anything, it's a hair flat. And I think it's about right. Pretty close. Hair sharp on the A. You know, once again, with this type of bridge saddle, I'm not sure we can do much about it. Although it does, I got to tell you, the saddle itself looks like it's leaning forwards a little bit too. I'll look at all that when I take the strings off. But if that's the case, if it's leaning forward, that would make this sharp. Just a hair sharp on the E. We'll just take her apart here and see what happens. Okay, I just checked the string gauge here. The large string is a 54. That's, that's the standard light, I believe. I'm going to do something a little different, I think. I'm going to try custom lights on this, which is just a little bit lighter. That way, you know, if we raise the action just a little bit, it'll kind of offset that. This is a 12, the uh, E string, the little E string. Surprisingly, these bridge pins are really loose. That might account for the fact that why they're leaning so far forward. I'm not really sure, but I'm going to look on the inside of the guitar and see if we can see anything up in this area and, and make sure there's nothing wrong. It does make me wonder. I don't see them leaning forward like these are leaning forward all the time. The saddle here, if you look, at, you can see it wiggle back and forth. I'm not a fan of these uh, electrified saddles, i got to be honest with you, especially the ones that have the pickup underneath. I, I prefer, if you're going to electrify an acoustic instrument, I prefer to have that pickup on the inside of the guitar underneath the bridge here, like the bags type uh, pickups. I think they interfere with the sound much less than these do. This is uh, sitting, it's very shallow in here, and that's why it's leaning forward too. I don't know if I can find a way to shim this along the front here to, uh, to fix this. Um, it'd be very difficult. It, I, I, it would be such a thin shim to keep it, uh, in other words, to keep it from leaning forward is what I'm trying to say. I really don't know what we can do about that. We'll, uh, we'll, think, of, we'll think on it and see if I can come up with a solution. First thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to fix this battery because that is driving me bonkers. It's just flopping around in there. Matter of fact, since I've got this open and i got my hand on the battery, I'll just take the battery out and test it and make sure it's a good battery because no point in putting it back all together with a bad battery. Just thought I'd show you the battery is reading out at 6.94, which is below the 9 volts. Therefore, this battery is no good. Um, I don't know if she uses her pickup or not. If she doesn't use it, we shouldn't even put one in there, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a new 9-volt battery in there. I remembered from an email that she had said something about not using the electronics much, so I have emailed her and I decided to ask her if she's going to use the electronics. If she's not ever going to use them, then I would prefer to just go ahead and disable or get rid of the 
pickup in here. Just take it out temporarily. We can fold it up inside. It won't like it's not like changing it permanently or anything. And just put a regular you know deer antler saddle in here, and um, I think and we can make it fit this slot much better, and it won't lean forward, and you know all that kind of good stuff. So anyway, that's my preference, and I would like to see what she says about that. While I'm waiting for her reply, I'm just going to go ahead and level up and dress these frets and, and uh, I think we're going to make a big world of difference in the guitar on the buzzing just by doing that. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, linseed oil on the neck here and uh, that'll just make that neck look like brand new again. Well, that's uh, about all I can do till I hear from the customer about the battery because I'm not going to put the strings on there till then. So we'll go on to the next instrument. Another little project here, but first I just want to say thank you to Tom. Uh, Tom was the uh, fellow who, uh, if you've watched part one of the video, the Regal Wreck. He uh, owned that guitar and he sent me some really nice deer antler. These will be great. I'll be able, and he sent this piece too. This, this piece probably won't work for an antler saddle, but I might be able to use it for a nut. You know, these tips are pretty solid and sometimes you can use that much of it for a, for a nut, a guitar, or a mandolin nut perhaps. I want to give a pointer out to folks. If you're planning to send me antlers, um, okay, like this one had the skull cap, and I'm not going to try to hold this up here, but anyway, this was cut off of the skull cap. If you're going to cut them off, here's just a suggestion. Uh, if you would just cut them straight down the middle, just, you know, the antler come off this, these sides, just cut right between the antlers, just cut that part. First of all, that'll be an easier cut. Second of all, that'll uh, save the very best part. The very best part is actually the base of this. The uh, base is really solid. Now, I'll still be able to use this, no problem at all, but it would have just given a little bit more uh, meat had, had it just been cut right between the antlers. So if you're going to send them to me, and I appreciate it if you do, just cut them between the antlers and, and then leave the two pieces of skull cap on there. That way you can fit them in a tighter box. Um, Thank you very much, Tom. I really, really appreciate this. Okay, let's get on to our next little project here. If you've noticed on my website, I have a new service out there that's called uh, New Instrument Setup. So basically, if you have a brand new instrument that you're, you're uh, buying off of uh, a website or whatever, if you just have it shipped directly to me, and that's what's happened here, this is another little... Uh, uh, Rogue Mandolin, and I believe they bought this one from Guitar Center, if I'm not mistaken, and they had it shipped directly to me. Uh, this particular customer lives in the Farmington, Missouri area, I believe, and uh, at least I think that's what I remember. I have to look all this stuff up. But anyway, I think she's, I, th I think it's a local person. I believe it's a lady, and uh, so uh, she just had it shipped to me, and I believe she's going to drive here and pick it up. It's probably about a two-hour drive. So uh, we're going to get started on setting this up. You'll see a uh, very, very easy setup. I, I just charge forty dollars for that service. Now, of course, it doesn't go into the real detail. This is just to tweak it to make it play easy. Basically, is what it amounts to. And it, I just got it out of the box. Uh, literally, haven't un, unwrapped the off the strings here. I haven't unwrapped this paper. So. Uh, And there's a uh, little pick guard cover on there. I'll just leave that on there. It won't affect anything. All right, the first thing that I do for the $40 is I take off this little cover and I'll put a piece of felt in here, which will help dampen any extra vibration going on in these strings. So you just put a piece of sticky felt across there. You don't really see it from this side. And then we'll put the cover back on. 
And that felt then will be laying on those strings rather than the metal. And uh, that helps d dampen any extra noise. Of course, it's obviously out of tune right now, and that's okay. Uh, that's the way they loosen the strings up for shipping, and you should always do that. If you ship an instrument to me, be sure to loosen the strings. The next thing we're going to do, and it always is sharp, there's just these sharp corners on, on this net and stuff. So when you're sliding your fingers up here like this to make a cord, that catches your fingers. So we're going to round all that off. Yeah, it's just, it's just day and night better. Like this side here, it literally will just catch your finger. I mean, you can almost not push past it. This side here just glides right past, no problem. Now we're going to do the very same thing to the, to the saddle itself. Your, your hand can touch the saddle and catch these sharp edges and it sometimes actually kind of hurts even. So we're going to just go ahead and cut all these little sharp corners off, bevel everything. Alright, much better. Now on this one I also feel sharp edges on the frets. You don't always feel that on new ones, but I do on this one. So. <clears throat> We're just going to take uh, the and just knock the corners off. You can tell that somebody's attempted that, but they didn't do a very good job. Much, much better. They actually, you could almost feel them sticking to your fingers. You can probably see the little bit of filing there on the fretboard that has come off of there, and those are just those little corners and things that were sticking up. And uh, and I just sweep all that off. Okay, now we're actually ready for the actual setup, and this here can take a little longer. It really depends on the instrument, but uh, I get out my little 18 thousandths gauge here, and uh, you can see here that it's quite sloppy. There's plenty of room in here. Um, you know, I would say there's almost double that. This is probably, I'm going to just say roughly 30 thousandths uh, up, and we, this will be, I'll be bringing it down to 18 thousandths. Strings are already loose. Right on the money. A little high there. Lower it down a little bit. Still maybe a hair high. That's pretty close. A little tighter on this side than this side, and that's the way it ought to be. All right, let's tune it back up here. All right, so let's see. Plays good, no, no, no buzzing. Let me double check. tuning's a little off. Obviously, it's just the first time it's been tuned up to pitch here. Yeah, it plays nice, easy, no problem at all. That the G is a little bit high yet, so we're gonna take it down. It's it's still quite high actually. The D is pretty darn close. I don't hardly even see it move at all when I press the D. Actually, I don't see it really move. The G is moving though, so the G is still high. We'll take it down. Now we're going to tune it back up. I believe the customer asked for different strings, you know, on this. I'd have to look in the email to double check, but I believe she actually asked me to put new strings on it. But at, up to this point, this is what you would get for your $40, basically, for this setup.
Now, I, uh, that's what you get for the 40. If you want extra things like different strings, of course, I gotta charge you for the strings and things, and a little bit of time to change them out. But otherwise, uh, that's what you get. So, just thought I'd let you see that.